In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we have come to the solemnity of Pentecost, our 50 days of the Easter season now concluded. So as we enter into this solemnity, we ask that the power of the Holy Spirit may come deeply into our lives purge us of our sins, and draw us closer to Christ. So as we prepare for this reality, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of all believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard the speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O to him be my theme. I will 
will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Spirit, Lord divine,
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. If this was a normal year, this week our parish family would celebrate our eighth grade graduation. The faculty and staff of John F. Kennedy Catholic School, along with our parish leadership, would have honored them at a special mass where they would receive their diplomas and we would give specific awards. However, they, like other high school graduates and college graduates, their graduations are gonna be much different this year. We're gonna honor them at the end of the week. But this different graduation does not diminish any of their achieve achievements like many of the other graduates. They worked hard, they have fought the fight, they have finished the race. So congratulations to any eighth graders who are watching this mass. And at the end of this mass, we're gonna scroll their names so all of us can keep them in our prayers and also to offer thanksgiving for their lives and for the many wonderful things they're gonna do in the future. And since I've been thinking about graduations and specifically our eighth grade graduation, I guess that really colored my prayer about Pentecost. Because Pentecost in a way was a graduation or at least similar to a graduation. Because as you and I have attended graduations in the past, it is a time to celebrate achievements. It is a time to truly acknowledge that men and women, boys and girls, preschool to graduate school, have done amazing things. But the ceremony, implicitly and explicitly, marks the time where they're being sent forth. You have graduated. It is now time for you to go on to the next phase of your life and use the skills and abilities you have learned to transform the world. And again, whatever level of graduation it was, it's all the same. Celebrating and then being sent in a way on mission. Go and do amazing things. And that's what happened at Pentecost. Our first reading for today in our gospel have a different perspective on Pentecost. But the common reality is of, the, of these accounts is the following. The gift of the Holy Spirit transformed the disciples and therefore transformed their lives. They experienced so much with Jesus over his three years of public ministry. And also they experienced his death, resurrection, and his ascension. And now they were waiting for the last gift that Jesus promised them, the paraclete. And now, on this Pentecost Sunday, we mark that event where they received the sevenfold gifts of the Holy Spirit, and they had completed and received everything that Jesus had given them. So as St. Paul says in the second reading, 
to each individual the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. And this was very much true for those disciples because they went out and built the church. The Holy Spirit changed them, guided them, and provided for them in such a ways that we now, as a Catholic church, have over one billion members. And it began with Pentecost and has grown since then. So Pentecost is truly an event we have to celebrate because it is the beginning of the church as we know it, but also Pentecost continues to see its effects grow because every person that receives the Holy Spirit truly helps to make the Pentecost moment continue through all time. Now, I know I said that Pentecost was similar or like graduation, but there is a couple big differences. And the first big difference between Pentecost and any graduation is that the disciples and us did nothing to earn the Holy Spirit. Because as we know at a graduation, people earn diplomas and awards for their hard work, for their determination, for their commitment to finishing their degrees. But the disciples did nothing to earn the Holy Spirit. It was a complete gift. And furthermore, not only was it a gift, but it had to be a gift so that they knew that it was not them, but it was Christ working through them. So we, brothers and sisters, need to imitate that reality that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are made worthy to be called sons and daughters, but we did nothing to earn it. It is a complete gift from God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit because Christ gives it to us. But we have to be open to receiving that gift of the Holy Spirit because we remember our good friend Thomas on Divine Mercy Sunday he needed to be open to faith. Again, the Holy Spirit's being given to us. We can't earn it, but we have to be open to it. So from the sacraments to our personal moments of prayer, we truly just have to be open to the Holy Spirit. And the second difference between Pentecost and a graduation is the following. It's meant for everyone. Sometimes graduations are for a particular group. In many many ways, they even are exclusive. But Pentecost is meant to be a universal event, open to everyone. So we need to be men and women that go out and invite everyone, everyone to be open to the gift of the Holy Spirit and to be a part of the church. Because the only way it's grown is by people like you and like me constantly working to spread the good news of Jesus Christ so that the church continues to grow. And that, brothers and sisters, again, as I said earlier, is how this Pentecost moment continues day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, century after century. Because God wants us to receive this gift of the Holy Spirit and to share it with everyone. So as we continue with this Mass, let us give thanks to God for his Holy Spirit. Let us pray that it changes our lives so that we become more faithful disciples. But also let us pray for those who have graduated in a special way, our eighth graders, that these men and women may truly be wise and use their talents and gifts to serve God and to serve the world.
Together now let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Transformed by the Holy Spirit, we pray now for the needs of the church and for the entire world. For all entrusted with the word of God, for preachers, presbyters, pastors, and parents, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, may the Holy Spirit give them discerning hearts to know his will and the courage to follow it. We pray to the Lord. For print and broadcast journalists, for all who provide truthful information in the media, we pray to the Lord. For firefighters, police, postal workers, garbage collectors, and all who work to keep this complex world going, we pray to the Lord. For all married, consecrated, and ordained people who have chosen their vocations with a desire to build God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. For those suffering from the coronavirus and for those who care for them, we pray for the Lord. For the whole world suffering from isolation from one another and separation from the sacraments, may Christ bring us comfort and strength in our spiritual communion with him. We pray to the Lord. For the parish, all the faithful departed, all the intentions listed in our book of prayers, and for all of our own intentions, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, please hear the prayers we bring before you this day, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. See 
our brothers and sisters in spirit, bound in all nations, yet near to the Lord, each one belonging together now longing for the shepherd who gathers us all, gathers us all. We are many, yet we are one. We are separate, yet bound in his love. And together, many and one. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of the sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your pastoral mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all people in the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth into one profession of faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this time, you can make your spiritual communion at home. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We got a couple announcements this weekend. Um, starting today at 10 a.m., we'll be collecting non perishable food items and also any um, personal hygiene products or toiletries for St. Anthony's McWindow. And thank you, Advance, for your support. And that will be going to 1 p.m. So 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. today non-perishable food items, toiletries, and personal hygiene products for St. Anthony's McWindow. And also, we will be continuing the broadcast of this Mass on Cozy TV. Starting next week, though, it'll be at a different time. So instead of 11 a.m., we're going to be at 7 a.m. So you'll have to start your coffee a lot earlier on Sunday mornings, but we're happy to do this for all of you at home. And again, starting next weekend, Mass time will be at 7 a.m. on Cozy TV instead of 11, and it'll be going for three months. Have a blessed Pentecost, and have a great beginning to your June. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May you know of his love and mercy all the days of your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Amen. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Difference. Go make a difference in the world. 
your peace Go make a difference in the world Go make a difference We can make a difference Go make a difference in the world Go make a difference We can make a difference Go make a difference in the world So let your love shine on Let it shine for all to see Go make a difference in the world And the Spirit of Christ Will be with us as we go Go make a difference in the world Go make a difference We can make a difference Go make a difference in the world Go make a difference We can make a difference Go make a difference in the world We belong to
a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the salt of the earth, called to let the people see the love of God in you and me. We are the light of the world, not to be hidden but be seen. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the hands of Christ reaching out to those in 